Thank you, Phil. I'm delighted to be here. I heard from Doc for almost 25 years about this place, and it's my first time to come. Thank you for having me. We're here to celebrate three things today. One's the opening of the Edgerton Center. Another is Esther's birthday. And the third thing are the life and contributions of Harold Doc Edgerton. His friends and colleagues, and many of you called him Doc, and you'll find that that's, that's what I will revert to just naturally. He was a friend and colleague, and probably most importantly, a mentor to me when I was a student. And so I'd like to tell you a little bit about him today. So that's, that's my task, to tell you about his life, a bit about his life and contributions. I'm going to begin with just a brief history about Doc. I want you to have, just to set the context, and then I'm going to show a video that comes from Jacques Cousteau, who couldn't be with us today, but uh, sent a video. I'm going to show you a lot of slides and then a very short video of Doc himself. Quick history. Doc was born in Fremont, Nebraska in 1903. His family moved around for a few years and settled in Aurora. Finished high school here. He went to the University of Nebraska, Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering in 1925. Went to work for General Electric for a year or so and entered MIT in 1926. By the way, at General Electric, he worked on large electric motors. Finished a master's degree in 1927 at MIT and became an assistant professor in 1928, still working on his PhD, his doctor's degree. Some of his doctoral work involved the study of large electric motors and he began using the synchronous stroboscope to study motors. And he perfected the modern electronic strobe in one of its first forms in, to study motors with. Got his doctor's degree about 1931 or two and began to turn his new instrument, the electronic flash, on everyday natural subject, subjects and opened up new worlds of seeing that people had never realized existed around them before. And that's what I'll show you today. First, I'll show you a group of stills that were taken between 31 and 37. And then he developed another technique, technique known as multi-flash. Well, I'll show you some of those. He did his first underwater lighting and camera pictures in 1937 at Woods Hole Oceanographic. So he began working in the oceans very early. He worked on wartime night reconnaissance photography during World War II. And in 1953, through the National Geographic Society, he was introduced to Jacques Cousteau. Between 1953 and 1979, he went on 10 different expeditions with Cousteau around the world. The, uh, the governor spoke of inspiration and the opportunity for greatness. And I thought I would, I want something I'd like to share with you is, all right, how do you achieve greatness? A maxim, a maxim that Doc Edgerton would have said is, work like hell, tell everyone everything you know, seal a deal with a handshake, and have fun. That's how, you, that's how I think he would have said how you achieve greatness. One of the early mo electric motors that he was studying when he developed the flash, he says the first subject that he turned to after electric motors was water coming out of a faucet. That's a very early picture from the early 30s. Smoke being drawn into the tip vortex on a house fan as it rotates. Simple everyday things like a girl jumping, but absolute frozen stop motion. I've never seen this, I only heard of it, of a person being shot out of a cannon at the circus. This is in Boston Garden. The person goes 175 feet.
to introduce the world to the power of the electronic flash, Doc actually turned first, where he first turned successfully was to the sports photography community. And he took pictures at Boston Garden and other events and got people interested, photojournalists, interested in using the equipment through photographs of sporting events. A rodeo in Boston Garden. This is said to be one of the first photographs that went out of a sporting event over wire service and really got the attention of photojournalists. An indoor track meet. More rodeo, all in the early 30s. You know what that is, tennis racket at the time, moment of impact. Harvard football coach about 60 years ago. Child running. This is now the first picture I'll show you that's called multi-flash, which was developed in 37 or 38, at least the pictures that we have of it in which you have a single negative, but with, once the camera is open, you flash the flash at equal intervals several times. Another multi-flash picture of a tennis return. A golf ball bouncing. The MIT fencing coach multi-flash picture with a foil. Fly rod. It's a diver, the MIT swimming pool. Golf shot. And now the next picture is what's it really look like when the golf club hits the ball? A lot of the ball really gets, come, gets squished. A dancer. Ping pong. This is a bullet cutting a piece of string, multi-flash picture. So the curls are the each position of the string after the bullet has passed. Just a splash of water when you've ever gotten soaked by a car driving by. Does the water get out in front of the car? Sequence of bullet pictures. The one on the left, just before it hits a steel plate in the middle, it's hitting it, and then at the end, it literally turns to a liquid and splashes. This is called a shadow graph. It's a picture of a bullet that allows you to see the shock waves from the tip of the bullet after it's passed through a piece of cardboard at about twice the speed of sound. These are all black and white pictures. Do you know why? They were all taken before color film was available. You ever drop a cup of coffee? Mrs. Lawrence, well, the story has it that a person who was to become a president of MIT, Vannevar Bush, one day challenged Doc to take a picture of a hummingbird, see, to challenge him to see if he could take a picture that would freeze the, mo the motion of the wings. This, this photograph is said to be the first successful photograph, stop motion, freezing the motion of the wings of a hummingbird ever taken. Hummingbird, some hummingbirds, beat their wings up to 70 times per second. The word in inspiration has been used a lot about Doc. And an important thing to remember is that he inspired a lot of other people to go further than he did. So he took the first pictures of hummingbirds. And then after that, and that inspired a person by the name of Crawford Greenwald, president of DuPont, who really wanted to go out and take pictures of hummingbirds. He built the first equipment for him. And Greenwald published a beautiful book of color photographs of hummingbirds from all over the world, taken with flash equipment developed by Doc.